Right now, Medicare companies all over the country are preparing a letter to send out to everyone that's enrolled in their plan. And so in this video, I'm going to explain what's in this letter, the importance of it, and what you need to be looking for. I want to begin by talking about three very important Medicare dates. But just before I do, uh, I want to explain a couple of acronyms that uh, you will come across in Medicare. Uh, those acronyms are usually three letters. Uh, they are IEP, SEP, GEP, AEP, and OEP. Now, these stand for initial enrollment period, special enrollment, general enrollment, annual enrollment, and open enrollment period. And so these are very important acronyms to understand. Now, these first three acronyms have to do with starting Medicare. So this is when people are able to start their Medicare A and B benefits. Uh, so this is when someone's either turning 65 or maybe they work beyond 65 and now they're 67 or 68 and they're going to start Medicare. And so they're going to start Medicare during one of these enrollment periods. Initially, this is for someone that is going to start at 65. They use that initial enrollment period to last seven months. The special enrollment period is for people who didn't start Medicare at 65 because they or their spouse were still working and they come in Medicare at a later date. They use the special enrollment period. Now, for people that make a mistake and they miss the IEP or the SEP, then they're stuck with this GEP. But my point is, these are enrollment periods to get started with your Medicare. Then after we have Medicare, now we have other enrollment periods that we have to deal with. And those are what the AEP and OEP have to uh, do with. The, uh, the AEP uh, is the annual uh, uh, enrollment period. OEP is this open enrollment period. And so what I'm going to talk about in this video are these three Medicare big dates that you need to be aware of. And so this first one has to do with the OE, uh, this AEP. AEP dates are this. AEP date is October 15th through December the 7th. It's about a seven week period. And this has to do with any Medicare plan that is written for one year only. And that would be two types of plans. That would be Medicare Advantage plans and what we call standalone prescription drug plans, also referred to as Part D plans. So Medicare Advantage plans, Part C, drug plans, Part D. Those plans are only written for one year at a time. And so Medicare gives people who enroll into those plans the opportunity, if necessary, Necessary to switch those plans. All right. And so that's what AEP is all about. So this would be someone that is already on an Advantage plan and they want to switch to a new Advantage plan. In other words, they found a plan that's going to be better uh, to, you know, to suit their needs. This also is a period of time when someone that's on an Advantage plan may decide to switch to a supplemental plan. Okay. In other words, they get off the C plan and will buy a Medigap policy. This is also a time when someone that's on a supplemental plan uh, can switch to uh, an Advantage plan. In other words, they decide the Advantage plan will serve their needs better. They get off the supplemental plan. And also, this is a time when if someone uh, has what we call the standalone drug plans, uh, they can switch those drug plans. All right. And so this would be October 15th to December 7th, this annual election period. This is the kind of action uh, that people can take. Now, I just want to note at this time that if someone does have a Medicare supplemental plan and they're happy with that plan, uh, there's nothing they have to do because supplemental plans are written for a lifetime. You can really keep it your whole life. And so remember, so this is all about plans that are written for one year at a time, Advantage plans and uh, uh, prescription drug plans. So that's October 15th to December 7th. So that's one of the big dates. The second big date would be January 1 to March 31st. March 31st. This is called the open enrollment period. This is different than that one, obviously a different name, but also different things that we can do because during this period of time here, we can do some switching. However, this is not a time when we can switch drug plans. So that is not possible during January 1st to March 31st. You have to make that decision up here. Uh, also, if you're on a supplemental plan and would like to switch to an Advantage plan, you cannot do it right here. It's impossible. Again, that switch is not possible uh, uh, the first three months of the year. But during this first three months, we could, as long as we're on an Advantage plan, go to a new Advantage plan, or from an Advantage plan, we can return to original Medicare and get a supplemental plan. Now, there's some rules to getting those supplemental plans, but my point is, this is the time period in which we can take that particular action, all right? So that's the second big date. Now, here's the third big date, and this would really be uh, the month of September, one all the way up to October one. 
because what's going to happen during uh, these dates, this one month period of time, these insurance companies are preparing that letter and sending that letter to you that we talked about. And that letter is called the annual notice of change, because in this letter, this is when the company uh, that has you covered either by that advantage plan or that prescription drug plan is going to disclose to you exactly what they're going to be changing for uh, the coming year. That takes us then to the next item that I want to address in this video, and that is what I call the three big Medicare mistakes. Hey, if you found this video helpful and if you want to see more Medicare information just like it, then go below, right below the video, and you can give us a thumbs up as well as subscribe to our channel. And every time I put a new video, which is about two every week, you'll be notified of that video, and others just like you who need this vital information will get it as well. So those three big Medicare mistakes revolve around this particular letter, uh, which is given the acronym ANOC, which stands for Annual Notice of Change. So the first mistake revolving the ANOC is sometimes people do not receive it. <laughs> That's a problem. And so the insurance companies uh, during the month of September are supposed to mail this to you, and it varies uh, company to company, but it's always supposed to be in your possession no later than October 1, usually it comes before that. But the point is, there are sometimes people do not receive um, uh, their ANOC. And so it could be because you've moved, there could be uh, some other issue going on. Uh, but if you do not receive that annual notice of change by October 1, then you need to take your insurance card out, whether that's the Advantage uh, card or your prescription drug card, and there will be a customer service line on their number. And you need to call them and let them know, hey, I did not receive my annual notice of change. Because just because you didn't receive it does not mean that you're exempt from um, uh, responsibility of what's contained in that packet. So that's mistake number one, not receiving it. So you be sure that you have ANOC in hand. Now, the second biggest mistake that people make is this. They get it, but they don't look at it. They put it right in the trash, okay? Don't do that. And the reason people do that is because they assume that because they like their Medicare Advantage plan this year or their drug plan this year, that they'll like it next year as well. And frankly, they just get a little bit lazy. And so you don't want to make the mistake of, of, of not opening the letter. And so what, what's my biggest piece of advice is to find something uh, to open that letter and let's open that letter. OK, why? Because inside of that annual notice of change is going to be some very important information. So mistake number one, you didn't receive it. Mistake Mistake number two, you didn't open it. So let's open that ANOC. And the third mistake is not reviewing it correctly. In other words, open the packet and let's see what the company is changing. Because they're not going to hide the changes from you, but it's going to be contained uh, within the envelope. And so you're going to open it up. And the big things that you're looking for, if you're on an Advantage plan, is you're going to look, have they changed the premium? Many plans uh, have a zero premium. Does it still have a zero premium uh, next year? Or are they going to add a premium to the plan? Uh, what would be the uh, annual max out of pocket. Many times those go up. Sometimes uh, we could have a plan that's 5,000 one year and the next year it's 8,000. Well, that could be a big deal, especially if you have health problems, you have to meet the annual max out of pocket. You're going to look to see if there's been any major changes within the network. Uh, is the doctor that um, uh, that you had, uh, have they dropped the plan? Are they still going to be in the network? Or there's different network changes that they'll disclose to you. They'll also disclose to you about your prescriptions. Are those still going to be covered? What changes have they made uh, within the prescription drug plan that's embedded within that advantage plan. But here's my point. You want to make sure to take the time, probably take you 10 minutes and maybe 15 minutes to peruse through and really look at those changes to make sure that you're aware of what they're going to do. Now, there's about an 85% chance that the changes they make are not going to hurt you in any way. But there's a slim chance, they say about 15% chance or so, that they'd be making some kind of a change that could adversely affect you and you may need to get off of the plan. So open the packet, uh, look at the changes, let's see what they're going to do. Now, uh, if you're on a, um, a prescription drug plan, remember those standalone prescription drug plans, it's all going to be about your prescriptions. So what are you looking for? Again, you're looking for what's the premium for the coming year. This year your plan may be $12 and next year it may be $20, uh, but you want to find out. Uh, secondly, you want to make sure that your medications are still covered. That's called the formulary. And if there's any formulary changes, they will let you know what those changes are in that annual notice of change. And then thirdly, you're going to see, are there are there any tiering changes? Every medication that Medicare covers well, on, a, on a plan is going to have a tier number. Usually it's five numbers, one, two, three, four, five. The lower the tier, typically lower the copay. And so sometimes we'll see a plan that one year they have a medication uh, as a tier two, and then they bump it to a tier four, or it's a tier three, and they bump it to a tier five. I have seen tiering changes change the monthly copay $150 a month. That's, that's uh, extreme, but it does happen. And so you're looking 
need for those changes, premium changes, formulary changes, and tiering changes. And, and again, 85% chance the plan will still work for you. Uh, and if it does, really there's nothing you have to do. But if you're in that uh, slim chance where they've done something that is uh, adversely affecting you, they drop the medication, they raise the, the premium, uh, uh, maybe they did a, a tiering change of a medication you're on, well, that's adversely affecting you and you probably are going to want to make some kind of a change. Now, after we've reviewed it uh, and we're happy with the changes, there's nothing that's hurting us, then we can make the decision then to do nothing. Because when you're on an Advantage plan or a prescription drug plan and you do nothing during this uh, enrollment period, uh, then that plan will automatically renew into the next year. And again, I just want to make sure if that plan auto renews, it renews because you wanted it to, because you took the time to examine what the changes were, you're fine with those changes, and uh, you're happy moving forward with the same plan. All right, again, that's what most people do. But if it's that slim chance where you're unhappy, then you're going to have to find a different plan. So again, uh, it happens every year. We'll have thousands and thousands of people call uh, in January and February, and they're upset about some change that happened, um, and uh, they wanted to then switch. Well, it's too late to switch now. You were given that opportunity uh, to make those switches October 15th through December 7th. Okay, so you want to make sure to open up your annual notice of change. Don't make any of those mistakes. Hey, if you come to a place where you know you're going to have to make some Medicare decisions pretty soon, the best way to do that is to click up here in this right-hand corner, and you'll have an opportunity to be able to book a call with one of our Medicare guides. All the guides around here I have personally trained, and they truly are professional. They'll answer your questions, and they'll show you different Medicare options to make sure that you're confident in the decision that you make. All right, that brings us then to the third and final element, and that would be this, what I'm calling the three big Medicare questions that we have to address during the annual election period. So the first one is, uh, can you switch? Can you switch? The next one is, uh, should you switch a plan? And the last one is, how to switch a plan. So let's address the first one, can you switch? Remember what we said, in this dates of October 15th through December 7th, what can you do? If you're on an Advantage plan, you absolutely can switch to a different Advantage plan. As long as that Advantage plan is in your market, you're able to get that. There's no health questions asked whatsoever. Uh, you just have to be enrolled at A and B, and you can select any plan that's available in your region. Typically, uh, that's uh, determined by zip code. So yes, you can if you want to switch that. You also can, if you're on an Advantage plan, uh, you can switch to a supplemental plan. At least you're eligible to do so. Now, remember this. Uh, if you've been on that Advantage plan a year, two, three, four, five years or longer, in order to make the switch to the to supplemental plan, uh, you can make that switch, but in 46 of the 50 states, to make that switch, you're going to have to medically qualify to do that. All right. Uh, there's four states that don't require uh, medical underwriting. Uh, that would be New York, uh, Connecticut, and uh, Massachusetts, and then Maine. Now, Maine's a little different because the only supplemental plan you can get without medical qualification will be a plan A. Most people don't get that. So if you're in New York, Connecticut, or Massachusetts, then you can switch to any supplemental plan uh, that you would choose. But in all the other 46 states and all the U other U.S. territories, if you want to make this switch, you've been on that plan more than a year now, uh, you're going to have to medically qualify. We have to ask you 25 or 30 health questions. Um, uh, we're going to check your medications that you're on or have been in the last 24 months and may have to get a statement from your doctor. So there is a process. We call that process medical underwriting. Okay. And so that's advantage to sub. So the question is, can you do it? And absolutely, you can make that switch uh, during this time. You also, at this time, uh, can uh, find a new drug plan. So if you're on a prescription drug plan uh, that uh, uh, you're no longer happy with because you took the time to look at the annual notice of change, formulary changes, premium changes, um, uh, tiering changes. Now you can uh, find a new drug plan. Again, no medical questions asked whatsoever. If it's in your zip code and you're enrolled in A or B or both, then you can have a new prescription drug plan. All right. And so we're clear on that. Now, that's October 15th to December 7th. Those are the things that are going on. Now, remember, we had those, that other period, which is the first quarter of every year. And this would be another opportunity uh, for people to uh, do this. Remember, uh, this was that dates of uh, January 1 uh, to March 31st. Again, if we're on Advantage, now we can't do drug plans. Uh, if we're on um, a, a supplemental plan and we want to go to an Advantage plan, uh, we can't do that, right? We have to do that up here. 
uh, whenever we want to do that. So I want to make sure you're clear that you can't do everything in that second uh, uh, date, but the first one we're pretty much can do uh, most anything that we would like to do. All right, so that's the first question. Can you do it? And now you see the rules uh, and uh, the answer is yes, you can. Now, should you do it? Well, again, that's the importance of the ANOC. Should you do it? In other words, is there something that plan has changed that is now hurting you? Uh, you may be on a vantage plan and your doctor no longer is going to take the plan. Should you do it? Absolutely. You want to find a plan uh, that has your doctor's covered, your specialist covered. Uh, let's say that your drug plan that's embedded in the advantage plan is no longer covering your medications well. Should you switch? Probably so. Find a vantage plan that's going to meet those needs uh, better. All right. And so the whole point is, should you do it? Yes. If there's a plan out there that's going to be better for you, then I would encourage you you to uh, make a change during this time. Now, I do want to give you a little caution here. Uh, beware of during this time of agents. Now, again, I'm an agent, <laughs> and so I'm not saying all agents would do this. We certainly are not going to do this, but there's a lot of agents out there who want to get you to switch, and what they'll do is uh, they will try to scare you into thinking you have a bad plan. Uh, they uh, will get you to kind of question your decision, get you to kind of second guess yourself, because their whole goal is uh, for you uh, to become their client. And so in order for you, that to happen, uh, they're going to have to convince you there has to be some kind of switch, and they're going to show you that their plan's the best. And maybe it is. And and you may need to make that switch. Certainly that can happen. But just remember, beware of agents because sometimes what happens is an agent will focus on maybe a, a couple highlights of a plan but won't tell you some of the bad uh, details of that plan. In other words, they avoid some of the negative aspects and just focus on the positive things. So be sure to look at the whole picture before you make some kind of switch. Because once you've made that switch, the agent that set you up on that plan originally is no longer going to be your agent. That may bother you or not bother you, but the point is you're going to have a new agent. So just be cautious and Sometimes it's necessary to switch. Other times you're absolutely on the best plan, so stay on that plan. And that's why you need to examine the annual notice of change. All right, so should you, just depend. So if I can get better coverage, I can get a better cost, or if I say I'm on advantage, I want to move to supplemental plan because I like the features of that, then those are fine uh, decisions to make. Just be sure it's based upon cost and coverage. Agents care about commission. You care about coverage. An agent really who cares about you will also care about coverage before they encourage you to make some kind of a switch. Okay? And then lastly, the next question is how to do it. And again, I just talked about agents. I can tell you this. Uh, when it comes to switching plans, if you can find someone that you can trust uh, that um, uh, has good integrity, a reputation, of that that's been in the business a while, then that's really what I would call a good agent. Uh, and so here's what I'm saying to you. Uh, I would not I would not do it yourself, okay? Sometimes people try to do this Medicare switching on their own, and they think that if they do it on their own, they're going to save money. Folks, you will not save any money by doing it yourself. Now, you may save money uh, by changing your own oil or by doing a you know, home repair or so, some of those kinds of things, but when it comes to Medicare, you're not going to save any money whatsoever because whether you do it yourself or you use a broker or a captive agent, the price is always the same. There's no difference whatsoever. Plus, when you do use an agent, if you find the right one, someone who's reputable, that really will care about you, uh, then uh, the insurance company actually pays us. Uh, you don't have to pay us a penny. Our services are truly free to you. So what we bring to the table during this time of the year for people who choose to use our company is this. Number one, uh, we will help you analyze the present plan uh, that you're on. In other words, we'll make sure that you fully understand what that plan is going to look like and why it is that you may need to consider changing or actually keeping that plan. But we want to help you analyze that. Now, secondly, we are brokers. Now, what that means to you is we're not captive to any one insurance company. Uh, we're brokers. That means we write for a multitude of companies and some markets we're going to write for probably the majority of those companies that are available in your market. So we're brokers. And that means we truly are unbiased. Uh, our biasness really is to you because we want to make sure you have the right coverage. And so again, that's what a broker will do, represent multiple companies. Uh, and again, the, uh, the price is all the same to you regardless of the company that you choose. Okay, then we have um, uh, the ability to then to make a comparison. We will help you to compare those different plan options. If we're looking at Advantage, we'll look at the premium. We'll look at the max out of pocket. We'll look at the perks that are in that Advantage plan. If it's a drug plan, we'll make sure that you're on the right plan. We'll compare that. If it's a supplemental plan, we'll look at initial premiums, 
Uh, we'll look at premium stability, but all the details of those carriers. So we'll help you to compare that. And then the key with us is you decide. We're not going to decide whatsoever. We're going to give you information. We'll brainstorm with you. We'll talk all that through. We'll help you, of course, analyze everything. Uh, you're going to make the decision. We're not going to put any kind of pressure on you to make that decision. We would love to be your broker. We'd love to assist you and have this long-term relation with you, but you have to decide what's going to be best for you. All right. And then what happens is we will then take care of the enrollment. And that way you don't have to worry about doing it on your own. You don't have to worry about making any mistakes. Uh, our agents will actually take care of that. Now, just so you know, uh, we call our agents Medicare guides because we will guide you through this entire process. And then once that is all set up, then we also have what I would consider a, a really a, a wonderful <laughs> a customer service team. Uh, and so when our clients have problems, they're not transferred uh, you know, to the Philippines or to India or to China or some international call center. They call right into our home office, which is U.S. based, and we help our clients. Uh, they, we are, English is our first language, not second, and we understand Medicare very well. And so we don't just simply write a plan and enroll you, but we also are their customer service as well. All right. And so here are the big questions. Can you switch? Yes. Uh, soon will be the time to do that. Uh, should you switch? It depends on what the plan's doing. Uh, can you get better costs? Can you get better coverage? And then how to switch? Uh, use someone that really cares about you, not just commission, but cares about you. And we'll go through this process to make sure you're making a switch that is truly in your best interest.